Coming up on Call It Like It Is. Hey, they only let me out for 30 minutes. I'm at this middle home across the town here. I have nothing to say about that. Guess who called me last night? Dallas. Cowboy. Cheerleader. It's the official Cowboys playbook. I've never seen a sports show like that before. From Planet Hollywood in Dallas, with Deion Sanders and Pam Oliver, this is Call It Like It Is. And now, here's Pam and Prime. Hey, look. Welcome to Call It Like It Is. I'm Deion Sanders, and by now you all know my lovely, gorgeous, talented, oh, you're so co host nice. from Fox, the one and oh, only Pam Oliver. Well, thank you, Deion. In a good mood. You seem to be doing very well. Yeah, very well today. under the circumstances. What do you mean? All right, five and four, going to San Francisco. You got the Redskins twice. You have the Packers. It's looking kind of iffy for the Cowboys about now. I don't know what you mean by iffy, Pam, but you got to remember one thing. The great thing about sports. Mm -hmm. Oh, here you come with the cliche. Pam, is that there is always <laughs> another game. The Behind every dark cloud, <laughs> there's a silver lining. Feel. How do you really feel? You want me to tell you really? how I really feel? Yes. How I really feel? Really? I tell you what, coming on up next is uh Call It Like It Is. <laughs> Call It Like It Is. The head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Barry Swisher will be here. <laughs> also here in the Chip the Troops, world, world famous. famous Dallas Cowboy. Really. <laughs> up there when we return from planet hollywood next on call it like, like it, it is, is. Right. pcn's presentation of call it like it is is brought to you by nike just do it and pepsi the official cola of texas stadium Yes, please. I'm not coming out here to do things for you guys. I am me, I'm going to be me, and that's what I got to do. He is the winningest coach in Dallas Cowboys history. He is one of only two coaches to win an NCAA title and a Super Bowl. Hey. Yeah. He may be the second most controversial man in NFL, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Right behind our boss, boss. Jerry Jones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before he comes out, here's some opinions about Barry Switzer. I, I like Barry Switzer. I think he's an excellent coach. He makes some interesting calls sometimes, but uh, overall I think he's doing a good job with the Cowboys. He's proven himself, yeah. I think he knows the game very well. I like Jimmy, but, you know, he's not here, so. I hate him. Why? Because <laughs> he's a jerk. I think he's okay. I think he's doing a good job. Now, I think he's struggled through a lot of difficult times, but I think he's finally starting to gain respect uh, from, from the people that, uh, that like the Dallas Cowboys. for 30 minutes. I'm at this middle home across the town here. <laughs> Kimber Lawn, so I only got about 30 minutes, so let's do this quick. How you doing? Uh, doing good, doing That's good. Right. I caught this show, uh, is it, uh, Sunday? Mm -hmm. I yeah. caught a flip, I'm flipping around, we happen to be in town, we're always traveling, I miss it. Right. And I said, my God, there's Dion on a quiz show. Y'all were holding up signs. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I've never seen a sports show like that before. Right. It's really neat, y'all do a great job together. You know, it's, it's not just Dion's show, though. Well, uh, since he... Uh, what? Since he what? Since he, uh, since he what? Doesn't pay you. I guess so. Well, I know you no, don't, you, do, He couldn't do this without I you. I know, this is true. No, really, he, he could not <laughs> do it without you. This is true, this is true. Great Thank you.
Guess who called me last night? Sitting home watching the second half of the ball game, you won't believe this. Dennis Rodman calls me in my home. Now well, think about that. Then I, I don't have it. I don't have. I, I don't run with Dennis Rodman. Yeah. I don't know Dennis Rodman, You're but he's from Southeast Oklahoma. Durant played basketball there, and my son is here tonight. But my son Dougie Fresh has been on Madonna, running up around Texoma with him a couple yeah. of years ago. But he was with a friend of mine, and they happened to be together, so they did me give me a call. Yeah, I said I was going to be on the Dion show, and he said, "Be sure to mention my name. I'm coming to town." Oh, we <laughs> mentioned his name on the show before. Yeah, no. I told Dennis I would love them to be on the show. But he can't come on here with none of them prom dresses. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. He's going to be my re roommate over there. Yeah. Hey, we can use the Reddit, so don't put that down just yet. Coach, um, a lot of people misunderstand you, but I think what really comes across about your personality is that you, you're going to have fun regardless. You're going to enjoy your life regardless. Well, I, I'm kind of the go-out hole, you know, I, I've, but I've approached life that way all along. I've been honest, candid, have fun, I care about people, I'm a compassionate guy. Hey, and, and I, I want to have a good time, a time, and I want people to have a good time around me. I want that type of atmosphere. I'm not an actor. I can't go out and try to, you know, to do things that aren't me. I've got to be me, and, and if you can't accept that, then don't accept it. Coach, you said something very deep to us in practice last week. You said that you know coming to the Dallas Cowboys, replacing the Jimmy Johnson, was going to be a hard task. You bet. I said, that. I said, you know, things have happened. This is my third year. My first year, I knew that it was going to be comparison, contrast, p p placing a guy, inheriting the coaching staff, which is a tough job, a tough transition coming in. Jerry said, I can have my own staff. But I told those guys, you give me a chance, I'll give you a chance. I'm a, I've got good people skills. I work with people. And those guys do a great job. I recognize that their talents, their efforts, what they've done, and the job that's been accomplished here. Jimmy left, J I became Jerry's guy here. So the next thing I know, it's going to be comparison contrast. That guy, my style, all those things, Dion. So I had to deal the year of that. Pressure won the Super Bowl. We went to, you know, we had to play you. Had to go out and we screwed up the first five minutes of that game where we'd won three consecutive. True. Pressure the second year. We got the job done. Then last week, we got to beat the ex-coach. I got a few things behind me. I feel good about the season. I had an interview today, and I really said this in a really minute. I said the first year was the toughest. The second year, the pressure of winning was the greatest. But the third year, I'm enjoying it more, even though we're five and four. Five and four, this year I've enjoyed because I've got some of those things behind me. Had a tough year last year with Troy, I told the squad, I made it a tough year for everybody, and I was in some way apologizing for that. And I made some mistakes along the way. I said it was important that we win this game against Miami for a lot of reasons, especially for Jerry. We got that behind us. Hey, we gotta beat San Francisco. We gotta do it the hard way. You know, I talked to the squad yesterday. Hey, we've done it the easy way. Let's do it the hard way. Let's go roll snake eyes, box cars. Let's go win five or six games. Yeah! Hey, I, I like adversity. I like it. I, I do. I like adversity. I like for people to say it and count us out because I like to go win it the hard way. Go on the road. Go to play. Beat them at Green Bay. They're always griping about having to come down here and play. We'll come up there and whip them too. See, that's the way I feel about it. Okay. Hey, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Coach, you're so well-spoken, I'm ready to go play right now. All right. And I want to play with you. Well, uh, we're, we're going to take you. a break for a moment. We'll be right back. Stay with us when we return more with Barry Switzer as we begin to look ahead towards Sunday's game against the San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> Hollywood in Dallas, and as we continue our conversation with Barry Switzer, let me ask you about the San Francisco 49ers, a team that people like to say you have not figured out a way to beat. Well, you know, I got we got the Super Bowl behind us. We beat Jimmy. Now that's the only thing we got left to accomplish. See? And, and, and truly, and I knew that would be their theme after the ball game in Miami last week. They said, well, you got it done. No, I said, no, we hadn't. I said the theme will be two weeks from now. We've never beaten San Francisco. Let me tell you this. 
If we had turned the ball over only one time and they had turned over 12, I would be 3-0 and against them, I promise you, because that's how it works. That's the ratio of turnovers. We turned the ball over 12 times in three games. They've turned it over once. And Dion knows the game as well as anybody. At this level of competition, there's not that much difference in football teams. It's going to come down to three or four or five plays, especially against two good te football teams. And we've got to eliminate those mistakes, those errors, and play smart football. Great, intense, great effort football. For 60 minutes, four quarters, every snap, every one that goes on the field, we can beat San Francisco. There's no mystique about that. There's no jinx. It's how you play the game, and we've played it poorly against San Francisco the last two, three times. Coach, you know, uh, as well as I do, the last year decision to go for a fourth and one backfired on us, and they blame you for not getting one yard. This year, we got third and one so many times, and it's like you can't win. After the game, they say, Dion, what do you think Coach Swisher should have went for it on um, third and one? Well, I said, first of all, Coach wasn't on the field. Second of all, when he went for it last year, you damn near ran him out of town. So if he don't go for it, do sometimes in the game when they boo when we don't go for it, do you want to go grab a microphone and say, I wish y'all just shut up back no, here? No, I, the only thing that bothers me ever from the fans is, first of all, I know they don't know. Most of them are not very sophisticated about the game. But when I hear them boo the players, that bothers me. When, I, when they boo our football team, that bothers me. And that's the only thing, that I, to be individually doesn't personally hurt me. But I've, I've, I've seen them do that when situations didn't work out for them, uh, the, they felt was best for their own egos, they would boo a football team. And that bothers me. And I've seen it happen in other stadiums around the country. So how do you feel when Jerry Jones comes down from his luxury box, flops himself right down next to you in the coach's box, and starts taking over the game. No, he does not. See, that's a perception and reality aren't the same thing now, Pam. Yeah, you know better than that. You know, you, no, wait, you no, wait. Know. If he tried to call a play, I'd say, Gary, Jerry, get your butt out of the coach's box. <laughs> now, that's exactly what I would say. Uh, what he did is came you? down and asked about 2-and-A over there. He really? asked me, he says, is 2-and-A blowing his knee out for the year? That's what he was worried about because they saw him take him up the ramp with the doctors and he was concerned. Jerry owns the football team. He owns the stadium. Hey, he can do it if he wanted to call the plays. If he really wanted to call the plays, he probably could call the plays. Ernie, he can walk into Ernie's box and say, Ernie, hey. Uh, Ernie, throw the ball to Dion. That's, that's, that's what he should say. Now, that's what he should be saying. That's what he should be saying. Hey, throw the ball to no, Dion. But Jerry, Jerry has never interacted that way. He's not that type of guy. He's a guy that's hands-on and wants to be a part of it. He's having a great time. He loves our relationship. We have a great relationship. Jerry's just like me and Dion. He's a good guy. He's a great heart. He loves people, cares about people. But this is his football team. If he wants to be a part of it, he can be a part of it. I have my ego. I don't have much of an ego. And if the guy wants to come down and dress out and be on the sideline, he can do that. If he wants to. I don't care. That will be nice. Very good, sir. Great guy. Thank you so much for being here. I want to thank you, Coach. You know hey. you're a whole barrel of fun to hey, me. I'm going to tell you something. Where you go? Where win, you go? win, 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 Sunday. <laughs> All right. Don't go away. Don't go away just yet. Hey, don't go away because when we come back, Mark Tony will join us and we will get a chance to hear the side of Tony that fans really don't know. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And as we go to break, the Nike Cam was at Valley Ranch this week trying to get an advanced game plan for tomorrow's big NFC showdown. Let's see if they had any luck. Just need to get into practice a little bit. Um, I think they're expecting I'm me. real sorry, but practices are closed. You won't be able to watch. Well, I know. I know they're closed to normal media, but I've already talked to uh, Barry, and he said it was okay mm -hmm. that I came in. Just tell him Paul's here. Everything Paul who? Paul Tagley. Paul Tagley. Right. Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. How you doing? I'm here to see, I'm here to see uh, Jerry Jones about the playbook for next week's game. Do you know anything about that? No. Now, what do you think the Cowboys are going to do against San Francisco? I think they're going to win. Do you have a copy of the playbook? No, I do not. All right, here's your task. You need to break into Jerry Jones's office. Okay. I've noticed over here in Emmett's locker, I noticed and I found this right here. I hope no one's looking. It's the official Cowboys playbook. So I'm going to check this out. The Ty J. Armstrong special. I, mean, I can't figure out what's going on here. I've never seen anything like that in my life. The kick Jimmy's butt on the sidelines play. This must be left over from the Miami game. Okay. All right, Yvonne, what, did, you, did you get a copy of the playbook in your no. office? What'd you yeah. find? 
Oh, how fitting. That's all you could find? Good help. to welcome one half of the oldest duo to play together in all of professional sports. Hey, that's saying a lot. Bill Bates and our next guest, Mark Twenty, have been teammates here since 1983. And someone who didn't have anything better to do figured out that uh, that's the longest running duo in pro football, pro basketball, Major League Baseball, and the NHL. Hey, let's welcome Mark Twenty. Hey, you got some good-looking hardware on your hands, I'm there, big to fella. Tell you. Thank you. There's another finger there, so <laughs> hopefully <laughs> get another one. Nobody's gonna mess with you in some alley and try to get that from you, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think so. What about some of your other talents, man? What about playing the bass? Yeah, I've been playing the bass last couple of years, and uh, actually, I'm still just uh, picking up, trying to learn it a little bit more. Yeah. But uh, one day, I hope to have a band of my own and have my wife actually singing it, because she's a great singer. But uh, I have to catch up to her level of, she's up here and I'm down here with my bass playing, so one day I'll be up here then we'll have a band get going. You got it with our band a little bit tonight, right? Yeah, I got up there a little bit and uh, hit a couple riffs. Is that what it's called, riffs? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to groove a little bit with them. You better get back to work on that one, I think. Yeah, I'll work a little bit more on it. Uh, what do you think you guys' chances are? Everybody already, you know, five and four ready to put you guys out to pasture. What do you think your chances are of being a wild card team? I think we have good chances. Like I said, we lost a couple of close games that we should have won. And I think this team is staying together and we're tight as a unit. That's why I think the camaraderie of this team will help this team get through the hard times. And I think uh, we'll come out at the end of the year. We'll start getting on a roll of sorts. And, and it's a better time than now as we go to San Fran. So hopefully that happens. All right, Pam, that's enough about football. Let's have a good time. You know, we're going to show... Uh, my man, too, in a, uh, in a little jam Mr. session. Cannon, I can hang with that. Okay. Mark Tuane and the uh, primetime player. This is our Pepsi Quick Slam for tonight. is brought to you by Nike, Just Do It, and Pepsi, the official cola of Texas Stadium. Thanks again to our band. Oh, Prime yeah. time players, you guys got it going on, right. man. Yes. Hey. Now, before we go, we are joined by a very famous group of entertainers, the Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders, yeah. have performed in more UFO trips than any group in this country, and they are also one of the most successful calendars produced every year. Let's welcome the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders! Hi, how are you? Hi, ladies. Are you all right? Can you make it back here? Y'all be careful now. Let's talk about the calendar, girls. It's, it looks beautiful. Well, we brought you and Deanna calendar. Oh. Um, it was shot in St. Kitts, West Indies. Sixteen girls were selected to go. And Did you get a go? Calendar. Yep. Good I was the one. Um, actually, there are four of us here that uh -huh. went to the um, calendar shoot. There are 12 girls selected actually for months in the calendar. Mm -hmm. And just... Mm -hmm. 
Do they sell well? I'm sure they do. They right? just came out in September, so. Okay. That's for you, Dion. That's for me? Oh, thank you so much. You mean all for me? Just for you. I'm trying to get my for marriage together. Give <laughs> me I mean something like this. Well, thank you both for coming out. We really appreciate it. Y'all talk about cheerleaders in the house. <laughs> we also want to thank our guests, Barry Switzer and Mark Tuanay for yeah. joining us. And his wife. And his wife. Yeah. But as we go, here's one of the cheerleaders, Nikki Hale, with a Reba McIntyre song. Why haven't I heard from you? That's it for Paula Mike and Liz. Take care, everybody. See you next week. In a play or in a car Tell me why Haven't I Heard from you Tell me why Haven't I Heard from you I said now darling Honey What is your excuse Why haven't I Call It Like It Is is a presentation of Play by Southwestern.